Sweet, sweet work. What's going on? We're doing something a little different today. I, um, it's, of course, football season, and I really wanted to get back into doing some of my hobby. It's been a while since I've done this. A while, eh, a few months, six months-ish. But, we're gonna brew beer today. <laughs> I have a recipe that I got. It was during the uh, Learn to Homebrew month, I believe, in 2020, so last year. And it was uh, a tropical IPA. I edited it and made it a double IPA and changed the hops and the grains. And so regardless, <laughs> that's what we're doing today. And I call it my Tropical Skinny Dipper, double IPA. Uh, if all comes out correctly this should come in at a rate about eight and a half eight eight and a half percent um i'm happy with seven but eight eight and a half is if i get my efficiency um i have stuff already outside sanitizing sitting in sanitizing solution getting ready to go i've got just about everything hooked up i gotta mill the grain still because uh, i have buy all my stuff unmilled you can get it both milled or unmilled from either your homebrew store or online I do it unmailed because it, it just stays fresher, longer. Um, this particular one, this recipe, a lot of this stuff is from Northern Brewer. Some of it's from my local homebrew store. Um, we've got uh, three pounds of the Pilsner Malt in this. Two pounds of Carafoam. One pound of uh, Caramel Munich Malt 60 Lava Bond. That's the darkness, the roast on it. And then nine and a half pounds of Maris Otter pale ale malt. Hop wise, and this the hops that I'm going to show you, literally just for the boil in the whirlpool. Got Centennial, Chinook. I've got uh, Citra. I've got Columbus, and I've got Sriracha's. And I think so. That's two four six ounces of hops in the boil in the whirlpool and i actually think it's only actually five and a half one of them i only use half an ounce on so the centennial only half an ounce and one thing that i'm going to be doing with this and i've learned to love it especially here in colorado because it is so bloody hot during the summer and it is real hard to even in my office where you know of course it's temperature controlled inside with our air conditioner but my office has a huge bay window so that front area gets hot hotter than normal which is not good for most ale yeast they like to stay right around 60 degrees ish um, and i do have a temperature controlled uh, mini freezer that's temperature controlled specifically for fermenting but next weekend i'm going to be doing my stout so i don't want to have that used up preoccupied so i am going to be going with a kvike yeast because these tend to enjoy fermenting at warm temperatures. Um, I'm gonna have to look at this particular one. This is Lal Brew Kvike Ale Yeast from Lalamont. Um, and it's their premium series, their Voss Kvike Yeast. Uh, the last time I used a Kvike Yeast, it sat at 90 degrees on its own. I, I had it wrapped, but it, stayed at 90 degrees and it fermented out really really nicely so that's what we're going to be using this i think that's enough talk let's get right into this i gotta get this grain milled up we gotta get some water going and i am going to be doing some um salts and some water adjustments uh, but i have that based off of my area so uh, in my water supply, I actually call a water supply to get the uh, chemical composition of the water make up with the amount of salt and um, calcium and all the hardness levels and stuff like that. So I can make adjustments so my water is similar to a different area, like you can have it as Denver or Germany. It's it's I use um, I use a brewing software for that, so it's all calculated out. I just have to 
put in what I want to put. Um, so, let's get right into this, shall we? <laughs> So is uh, but currently this is an all grain batch and my grain and my mash tun currently are at 80 degrees so I have to add enough water in here it's in fact actually it's five and a quarter gallons of water I'm gonna be adding in just for the mash and then three and three quarters for the um, uh, when I do a batch sparge which is just basically rinsing off the grains after they've been sitting there soaking to get as much sugar out of them as possible but I did a calculation already based off from weight and temperatures and stuff like that. So in order for my grain it needs to sit at about 152 degrees for an hour. And then in order to get the grain to 152 degrees and not go super above that, um, my water that I have to add in is going to be at like 163 degrees. So I've got it heating up right now with all of my water additions to kind of even out the profile and once that gets up to 163 degrees that's when uh, that's when we have a, another one hour wait <laughs> while it's doing its conversion turning all the starches into sugars all right soon soon it's actually already at 135 degrees so this, this shouldn't take much more longer. minutes roughly left on the mash and then I've got the sparge water heating up right now that's going to come up to 168 degrees just going to do a bulk, uh, bulk uh, batch sparge which is basically dumping everything in stir it up let it sit for a couple seconds reset the grain bed and then drain it off and looking at about get seven gallons of wort out of this and boil it down to five so it's going to be probably an hour two hour boil roughly yeah it's about a half gallon or almost a gallon every hour for me at this elevation with as dry as it is so getting there <laughs> we'll be uh Set in that grain bed shortly. These hops smell amazing too. So all you can smell is just this, this piney, citrusy smell coming off from all these hops. With yeah, gotta love it. Gotta love it.
seven gallons is not bad when it comes to, you know, what, almost 15 pounds of grain and, and only nine gallons of water. So that grain does absorb a lot. So now it's time for the boil. It gets ready for uh, all the hop additions. Now this is actually a 90 minute boil. I consulted my notes, it's a 90 minute boil. So I'm hoping it'll get right down to close to like right on the money, five gallons. Um, a little bit more is fine, but I'm fixing to, take a, fixing to take a small sample, get it cooled off to right around 65 degrees, 70 degrees and throw it on the hydrometer and see how, uh, how we're looking right now for uh, our pre-boil gravity. Alright, let's get this puppy burning. Alright. So... Using my refractometer, it looks like we're at 1.058 for the pre-boil gravity. Which is... 14 and a half bricks. I still don't really understand bricks. I just know it's a number that can be used. But 1.58. Ah, 90 minute boil. I'm hoping that we get to 1.070. We'll find out. But, uh, yeah, that's where we start out. That's where it is. It's just straight from grain, water, and hot water. First hop edition! Thirty minute hop edition going in. All right, we have hit that time. We are at the last boil hops. Fifteen minutes left in the boil. I also added in a little bit of uh, Irish moss and some yeast nutrients. We do have one more hop addition once we do flame out, which is just basically turning off the heat. But in five minutes, before we do all of that, I have to put the copper wort chiller into the kettle for the last ten minutes to boil to sanitize it for when we cool it down. And one nice thing about uh, doing the with the kvikes and stuff like that also is I only have to cool it down to 80, 85 degrees. And with it being down to 80, 85 degrees, it's not going to take long to come down at all. Uh, what I actually have going is with my, my wort chiller, I have a submersible pump in a, <laughs> uh, extreme, a Coleman Extreme 6. It's like a 65 quart uh, cooler. It's right full of ice water. So I have that little pump pumping ice water through that work chiller once I plug it in, of course, and it cools it down wicked quick. So looking at it right now with 15 minutes left to go, we're down to six gallons as it's boiling. So probably right at five gallons we'll get out of this. Um, and of course I, I messed up and I forgot to put my... Uh, dip tube and uh, hop screen in, so I'm not going to get all of it out of this batch. <laughs> it is what it is. It happens. But it's... I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this beer to be finished fermenting and in my beer fridge under pressure. <laughs> Alright, turning off the heat. Whirlpool boil or whirlpool uh, hops, uh, piney, resiny, citrus. You just can't go wrong with these hops. Mm. Up goes the heat. Uh, 
that plugger out. 15 more minutes and we'll be done with the brew day. Siphon it all in. Once this, uh, I'll stir this up some. And we'll take a post boil reading. And then once it cools off, I'm going to get a secondary reading. But 15 more minutes. <laughs> Let me get in the light. Just 15 more minutes. And we'll have close to five gallons of beer going to ferment. It's a great Sunday to me. What you're seeing here is how active the yeast was literally hours after putting it in. And this is the next morning. <laughs> So, of course, a blow-off tube had to be put on. Now, this blow-off tube is literally just a tube going from the fermenter into some sanitizer liquid, but as you can see, the yeast is still extremely active. And if you look in the tube, you can actually see some of it going down into the sanitizer. Well, we're out at the beer fridge out in the garage. And I am extremely happy with how this beer came out. We have not only the, we've got all three different sizes of bubbles. We've got the small, medium, and large. And the smell and color on this, it's got a great amber color on it. it looked, it's gonna show up dark. Um, maybe if I got my phone out, which I left in, my office um, but oh citrus grapefruit pineapple I just love the way that the kvike yeast and all this huge amount of hops just kind of meld together And this did end up finishing out pretty good too. It did drop down to 1.019, which puts it at, I think, right around 8.2% ABV. Um, I'm gonna have to put do something about the echo in here though. <laughs> but what a great beer. I love this beer. If you like IPAs, mm, it's a good recipe to get. Uh, I believe the uh, American Home Brewers Association still has the recipe available online. I'll have to check that out. I'm gonna enjoy my beer. The calculated IBUs that came in for this particular beer, whereas uh, I think it says 99.9 .9 IBUs, which is a lot. Um, your taste buds can only perceive 100 IBUs anything over that and it's just it's just not anything no there's no added bonus to having over 100 IBUs um, and this just came out exactly the way I wanted it to it's extremely drinkable if you like a IPA extremely a hobby IPA with a tropical twist <laughs> well thanks so much for watching if you've gotten this far uh, let me know what you if there's a style that you would like me to try brewing um, I do have some additional recipes I've, I've had been home brewing for quite a few years now but yeah leave me a suggestion what you want me to uh, to brew next um, or after the next brew because I'm already got uh, my Imperial Stout I'm going to be brewing which I've just did the starter on it yesterday so this coming up weekend I should have a nice healthy starter feast and I've got all my grains already thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one cheers